hello. Tonight we bring our stories to a close. Tomorrow when we wake up, Father Christmas will have been, Jesus will have been born, and we can celebrate Christmas with food and gifts and laughter and family. What a wonderful day. So let's join little bear as he finally reaches that stable. On December the 24th, Benjamin opened the last door and saw a manger. As the little bear and the little lamb approached the warm stable, they saw the child lying in the manger. The child opened his arms to the little bear laughing and the little bear's heart was filled with joy. Everyone who the little bear had met along the way gathered before the manger, the animals, the beggar, the robber, the old man, the blind man, the king, and above them all shone the star. Benjamin sighed happily. It's finally here, mother, he said. It's finally Christmas. Mother bear kissed Benjamin on the cheek and said, Merry Christmas. Let's go and place our last piece in the Nativity Jigsaw as we go through our Advent calendar window for the last time. Well, we finally made it to the end of our nativity scene. We have one piece left to put in. If you remember the story, we talked about Mary and Joseph and the way in which they traveled to Bethlehem because Joseph had to go there to report because the Roman authorities had told him he had to go there. And when they get to Bethlehem, it's full, it's heaving. You can see from the crowd scene, there's so many people there and all of the hotel rooms, all of the inns are booked up. But there's one kind innkeeper who allows them to go and use a stable around the back of his house. When they get there, in all of that messiness, in all of the dirt and the grime and the animal smells, something happens. Mary gives birth to our last piece of the jigsaw, the baby Jesus. Let's pop him in, completing the scene. And that's, that's the thing. That's what Jesus does. He completes the picture for us. He reminds us of the fact that we're loved by God, that we're precious and important and valued by God. Don't come back tomorrow because tomorrow's Christmas day. Tomorrow you'll be busy opening your presents, eating the food, enjoying the time together with families, with your family. But remember through all of that, that message that Jesus brings, that we're to love and care for each other and try and do your bit to help out around your house or your home to bring God's love and grace to the lives of your parents or whoever looks after you. Enjoy. Have a great Christmas. For our final story, we go back to the Gnome Wood to conclude our time with Willa, Willie and Grandfather Moses. Do you think the baby gnomes will be born? Do you think the gnomes will celebrate Christmas? Shall we go find out? Nim, Nam, Nommy, Willie, Willa said yawning when she woke up. Have you any idea how long we've been here with Grandpa? Of course, said her twin brother. This is the 24th night of December. But why did Grandpa set the alarm clock so early? It's still light outside. 
Grandfather Moses' deep voice echoed through the cave. Ho, ho, had a good lie in, have you? Then get your clothes on, quick, and bring your invisibility cloaks. We must leave at once. There are going to be lots of surprises today. Willa and Willie did without their nightly wash and eagerly rushed out into the open air. What surprises was Grandpa talking about? Outside the cave stood Elsa the owl and a heavenly laden fox. Why, what, where, stammered Willa. Is this Papa's friend Finley? What's happened? The fox just gave her a friendly shake of the head and Grandpa said, Nothing to worry about, Willa. Everything's fine. Freya Fox and Elsa are going to help us with transport. The big people will be celebrating Christmas today, so we're going to join in the celebrations. Good food, lovely songs and little presents. OK with you? Yeah, that's cool, cried the gnome children, and they put on their invisibility cloaks. Willie sat between Elsa's wings and while Grandfather Moses and Willa climbed up onto Freya's back. Then off they went into the forest. They stopped in a clearing which had a large stone in the middle. Everything was so still and quiet that you could hear the snow falling from the branches. But the tracks in the snow showed that lots of animals had been here. This is the biggest meeting place and information centre in the whole forest, whispered Moses. Come on, we need to get Gnome in before everyone wakes up and comes out of hiding. He unloaded all of the bags and allocated the different tasks. Willie and Elsa, you can hang the bird food nets up in the branches. Willa put the nuts for the squirrels over there under the fir trees. And Freya, come with me. Grandfather Moses climbed onto the rocks and shoveled the snow to one side. But there was no stone underneath. He and Freya pulled the protective cover away and revealed a pile of sweet scented hay for the deer. And Moses' bags also contained apples for the wild boar and turnips for the rabbits. Very soon all the presents for the animals had been laid out. Quick now, let's get back to the cave, whispered Grandfather Moses. There we'll make ourselves comfy and leave the animals in peace to enjoy their Christmas. OK, but Elsa and I have got a few more things to do first, said Willa, Willie with a grin and out of his cloak he took some new wishing stars, which the owl had helped him to hang in the trees around the clearing. Everything now looked even brighter and lovelier. The dark red winter sun disappeared behind the trees, and the gnomes were about to leave the animals' meeting place, when suddenly behind them a mighty voice shouted, Stop! They froze with fear, and warily turned to see who it was. In the middle of the clearing stood a giant stag who bellowed, Which of you is Moses? Um, that's me, replied Grandfather Moses, somewhat surprised. I have an urgent message for you and your grandchildren, said the stag, and he placed at their feet a tiny package, which had been tied to one of his antlers. The message came from Theo and Mona. Oh, thank you, cried Moses, Willa and Willie, all at the same time. But the stag said, it's we who must thank you. Merry Christmas to all you gnomes. Merry Christmas, cried Willa and Willie. They could hardly wait to get back to Moses' life tree. There was no one to be seen for miles around, but the pot of wishing punch hung steaming around upon the fire. And next to it lay a fresh nut cake and three little cards on which were written Moses, Willie and Willa. It looks as if a Christmas gnome has been here as well, Moses said, laughing. They all sat down happily to eat their Brexlow, with the gnomes demolishing the nut cake and Freya and Elsa enjoying a pork sausage. After that, Willa and Willie were allowed to open the express package. Grandfather Moses read out loud the letters that were inside. Nim Nam Nommy, my dears. The long wait is finally over and we can give you some wonderful news. Mama Mona has had not one, but two sets of twin gnomes. Such a wonder only happens in Gnomeland once every few hundred years. All the babies are well and happy, and we are grateful for this gift. Please come home quickly so that we can all celebrate together. We're sending Finley Fox to fetch you, and are looking forward very much to seeing you. With love, from Mama Mona, Papa Theo, 
and your four little brothers and sisters, whose names and life trees we will leave to you big children to choose. P.S. There are two girls and two boys. Not long after, the three gnomes were riding through the winter forest on Finley's back while the stars shone down from the cloudless, twinkling sky. And with one voice, Moses, Willa and Willie cried, Merry Christmas. Finally, a happy ending. I hope you enjoyed our story time this Advent and I hope that you've learned a little about the meaning of Christmas as well. I want to wish you and your families the happiest of Christmas and if you see Father Christmas, can you remind him to come and visit me as well? Because I think I should be on the good list rather than the naughty one. Thank you for joining me over these past 24 days and I look forward to maybe seeing you sometime in the future. Have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Good night.